This is your weekly IUP TV news bulletin, broadcasted from Davis Hall. This is Ryan Malone. And I'm Patricia Pinson. Today we will bring you stories that are relevant to IUP and the Indiana community. Let's begin with local news. IUP Advancement Division reports some progress in a fundraising effort. IUP Vice President for Enrollment Management, Patricia McCarthy, reported that the number of new freshmen and transfer students decreased while at the same time, the application for 2020 increased. Freshman applications for the number of admitted freshman students for fall of 2020 are both higher than last year with 935 completed freshman applications already received and 821 students have been admitted. A seventh person has died from a vaping related lung illness. This is the second death in the state of California due to vaping. There have been other deaths in Indiana, Illinois, Kansas, Minnesota, and Oregon. There's an ongoing investigation of about 500 possible cases in the U.S., and many states are discussing bans on these devices due to high addiction rates among teens. President Donald Trump's amped up rhetoric that the U.S. is locked and loaded sparked new fears of war with Iran. There is also confusion about his true intentions following an attack on a Saudi oil field that rocked global oil markets. The Trump administration upgraded the incident into a global crisis with its swift move to directly blame Iran for the coordinated drone strike. The president's comments sparked immediate uncertainty over whether he was being serious or whether this tension raising tweet was like a similar warning once aimed at North Korea, a risky negotiating tactic. Hurricane Humberto is generating high surf and rip currents along the southeast coast and may also threaten Bermuda later this week. Humberto is gaining strength after becoming the third hurricane of the 2019 Atlantic hurricane season, late Sunday night. The hurricane is currently moving northeast away from the southeast U.S. coast. Additional strengthening is likely, and Humberto became a Category 3 hurricane Tuesday. Three people were killed and 11 were detained Saturday night when a makeshift boat capsized the Caribbean. U.S. Customs and Border Patrol agents in the Caribbean borough said the makeshift vessel called a YOLA went under Saturday night with approximately 38 undocumented Im immigrants on board. The Ramy Border Patrol drowned three people and detained 11 others. It is unclear what the status of the other migrants. All your professors, all of them, they know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star, and it could change the world of a fifth grader. We gather here to hope in you. The communications media and instructional technology PhD program gave my life direction. This program was perfect for me with a combination of research and media production. Hands-on courses gave me skills that I now pass on to my students. I use all three areas of the program, production, theory, and research, every day in my job as a college professor. Learn how the CMIT PhD program can change your life. Visit iup.edu slash CMIT. Every year, IUP holds an IUP Day event that showcases recognized campus organizations that plan small events and activities for students. Our reporter Taylor Jones has the story. Students join organizations to find a place in college that they feel they belong in. IUP Day has hundreds of organizations to choose from so that students can gain a clear sense of the IUP community and the opportunities available through the clubs and activities. Well, I know for myself, I read something that said students who are more like involved on campus tend to do better. So, and so they can have somewhere they can fit in at and have a home while at school. From either joining a sorority or fraternity, a fencing club, or a TV show, these organizations want to engage you on the importance of who they are and what they bring to the IUP community. So Hawk Talk is an organization slash TV show that was created basically to bring campus together and display our diverse talents that we have as the IUP community. So on our show, we do a whole lot of fun segments. We do a whole lot of lit things. So make sure you get involved. Make sure to look into an organization that is right for you so that you can make lifelong connections. My name is Taylor Jones reporting for IUP TV News. Next semester is a good time to start planning for the future, especially those who are graduating soon. 
this past Sunday, students had the chance to shop for professional attire at a 40% discounted rate at JCPenney's. IUP faculty, staff, volunteers, and the JCPenney's team was there to assist students in identifying professional clothing options. Here is Patricia Penson with the story. For graduating seniors, the time to start applying for internships and jobs is nigh. And with such a competitive job field, it's important for students to look their best. Dressing professionally is important because it's the first impression between yourself and an employer. So you want to make sure you have a positive first impression. Luckily, the J.C. Penney's at Indiana Mall has just the solution for the soon-to-be working force. The Career and Professional Development Center at IUP collaborated with J.C. Penney's to offer 40% off all professional attire to ensure students are ready for the business world. Uh, I think it's really cool. Uh, I love that college students are having the opportunity to get discounts on all these items because uh, it's nice to have options. It's hard to get good stuff for what, for what we can afford. Faculty and volunteers alike have gathered in order to help make sure that students look their best for that crucial interview. I volunteer at this event because I want to educate undergraduate students on dressing professionally so they can feel confident during their interviews. Shoppers are given coupons for 20% off their future purchases and a discounted mini makeover at Sephora. I think that's great. I think it's awesome. Um, I would love to get a makeover. <laughs> I didn't know you were even doing that. Especially for like a discounted price. It's <laughs> hard to find anywhere. The semi-annual suit-up event at JCPenney's is going strong. Business attire, including business casual, shoes, and accessories, are at a more affordable cost than ever. Reporting for IUP TV, my name is Patricia Pinson. Whenever you are around IUP campus, you've probably seen the Penn newspaper. However, this year, the Penn newspaper has become fully digital. Our reporter, Jake Slablodnik, shared his story. That's how you start. For years, the newspaper industry, along with the concept of printed journalism, was limited to physical print. But right here in Indiana, students at IEP's The Pen look to redefine what it means to read the newspaper. Since 1924, The Pen has served IEP and the general public of Indiana with the latest in local news as well as global news. Dating back to its origin, The Pen has always remained a printed newspaper, but with the increase of technology over the years, The Pen has said goodbye to the, to the print world and hello to the digital world. There were really two reasons. Um, first off, we had noticed over the years that the numbers, the number of papers that were getting picked up from uh, the newsstand or from the news racks um, was going down. Our delivery drivers would, part of their job was to count the number of papers they would pick up every day. So what we were, the numbers we were getting was about 65 to 70 percent, meaning of the 4,000 papers we would print, 65 to 70 percent of them were going to the recycling center. This transition has not only made it cost efficient for the student co-op, but it has also made the editorial process faster, as well as the business side of things. With the transition to all, to an all digital platform, how has the pen seen more views from the players than normal with print? Yeah, so actually when we were in print, it was kind of hard to track those views specifically. Uh, Last semester, I know we had it over almost a month of read time, which was really cool. So that actually means people spent almost an entire month reading a pen. So yeah, we, we've actually been able to track that. Uh, we, we have our newsletter now, which is also, we're pushing out our issue along with all our other content to about 300, 400 people right now. We're just hoping to grow that as we move forward. Along with a thriving business standpoint, the transition to a digital platform has made the roles of the editorial staff easier. Last year, whenever they were still printing them, they had to be done on production night by like, I think it was 9 or 10, and then they would have to send it to the Gazette and then they would print it, but now a lot of the times we have more time to take our time with doing the different rounds that the papers go through, and it doesn't really have to be done by a certain time of the night. One benefit from going digital was the creation of pencasts, or podcasts made by the numerous members of the pen. These podcasts range from topics such as the Indiana community, IUP sports, modern culture, and much more. This gives viewers the idea that the pen is more than just a newspaper. It's a new and innovative type of network that goes beyond the regular newspaper. Yeah, so basically, uh, I've been a big podcast believer myself. Uh, if you look at any of the national sites that are really doing well right now, transitioning, from print to digital podcasts are a big part of it. I'm not sure if you're familiar with P9 Sports at all. They're a uh, group in Pennsylvania 
uh, Chris Rossetti is actually the alum of IUP and he created that site and they do a lot of podcast stuff and they seem very successful in their sponsorship. So that was something I kind of wanted to, you know, mold off that and I just kind of thought, you know, what a better time to do it than now. And I guess a good follow up would be how popular have these uh, podcasts become? Yeah, so basically, uh, you know, like any change, it's going to take time. But uh, Chicks Chat and that is actually has been our most popular podcast. And we're getting about you know, somewhere between 100 to 150 listeners per podcast. And uh, the other podcasts, you know, it's give or take. Some, some of them will get 50 listens and you know, some of them will get 200. It kind of just all depends. But I think within the next few years, we can definitely start getting, you know, a more regular stream of listeners. Although the physical aspect of the pen no longer exists, the switch to the digital world brings a new meaning to how we view news reporting. The pen will stay digitally exclusive for the coming years while adding more features to their website. There are even rumors of sports broadcasting in collaboration with IEPTV in the future. But for now, we are witnessing innovation in the making. Reporting from the pen offices, I'm Jake Slobodnik, IEPTV News. Success, we see it every day. Hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes, internationally known faculty who are committed to your success. Real world experiences to guide you on your career and life path, an alumni network 120,000 strong. I'm IUP President Mike Driscoll. Visit us. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. is IUP TV News. The past year, a group of students, mostly volunteers, decided to have, a f have fun creating a podcast to get experience and add something to their resumes every week. They chose up to four topics. Josh Niss shared how podcast members structured their program. Here at IUP, the Pen has been producing student-run newspaper independently since 1924. This year, the Pen has decided to go completely digital in addition, the pen has expanded to producing its own original student-run podcasts. This is sophomore Kyle Scott, a producer and editor for multiple podcasts. How does each show bring something different to the table? Well, each show is completely different from the last one, so one might require a lot more editing than the other, and they all just generally are completely different in style and subject, so it's something new, and you, they take different times to edit, so you kind of plan it around that. One of the Penn's podcasts, The Culture Cast, is all about college culture, good vibes, and how to have fun. I had the chance to interview IEP TV's own and Culture Cast producer, Jay Taylor, on how his podcast came about. What was the process to get Culture Cast on air? So, uh, Seth Wolcock approached us last year, knowing that the Penn was going to go all digital this, this year. And he asked me, Elliot Hicks, Steve Wingham Jr., and Mike Costa to, if we could do our own podcast. And it was a sports-related podcast called uh, Core 4. And at the beginning of the year, we were doing that, but it didn't really mesh well. We didn't really fit the brand. It didn't really kind of was going along the same lines. Nobody was on the same page. So we decided to uh, get rid of that. And I took some time to think about it, talk to some of my friends, and said we should do our own podcast kind of uh, more towards what's trendy nowadays, like kind of like Barstool Sports Podcast and like Joe Rogan Podcast. It was a very relatable to students and kids our age. So we decided to do something like that. So I approached that idea. I took it to Seth Wilcock and uh, Kyle Scott, and they said, they, uh, I, gave, I pitched the idea. They said, that's a, beautiful, that's a wonderful idea. Just get it going, and we can just get a few episodes going, get a few episodes rolling, see how it is, uh, kind of get our brand going. Uh, and that's what we did. That's exactly what we did. And now it's blossomed into this. We, uh, the first semester, it was Nick Dadowski, Mike Costa, Kyle Scott and myself, and now this semester we added Josh Niss to the crew because Mike Costa will be graduating, so I think that's a very good core group. We're still trying to find our brand, however, I think it's fantastic. We're so, so young, it's the first year the Penn is doing podcasts, and this is, we have still have two, two more years left as the core group of the Culture Cast, so I think it's very good. I uh, want to thank Seth Wilcock for letting us get the chance to do it, giving us a chance for the next two years, and it's going to be great. Co-hosts Nick Dodowski and Mike Costa add a unique angle to the show with their charisma and wittiness. How's your experience with the show been so far? Uh, so with podcasting, with the podcast that we do, it's just something different. Uh, we were both into radio, you know, and it's kind of more structured there. This is more laid back, you know, we just kind of have a conversation. Um, we usually can debate a bunch of stuff, and it's just fun, man. Like, we keep it light. It's pretty sweet. It's entertaining. 
I consider the guys that we do our college guys with. I consider us pretty creative guys. So when we have, we get the, we have op it's pretty much open book here. Whereas on the radio, we're scripted, we're censored. Yeah. Uh, same with TV, we can't do as much here. But when we come to the podcast, we can talk about whatever we want. We can yeah. say whatever we want. We can discuss whatever we want. And it's just a great time with some of our best friends. It's, it's a real fun time. Yeah. With the school year coming to an end, there's only a few more episodes each show will be able to produce. However, with the long summer break to work on new content, next fall, the podcast will be back and better than ever. This is Josh Niss reporting for IEP TV News. IEP has been trying to make an effort on campus to go green. Students can find recycling bins throughout the campus. Adam Dvorak has the story. Pay close attention to the bins in the Oak Grove. You may notice none of them are recycling bins. Although the Oak Grove is not the best place, IEP offers opportunities around campus to recycle. Everyone is familiar with the number of papers you receive and turn in throughout college. All that paper has to end up somewhere, and most of the times, it's in landfills. Thanks to the help of students on campus, in 2016, IEP recycled over 87,000 pounds of paper. I talked with IEP students that put an extra effort to reduce waste. And I think recycling is important because a lot of waste in landfills and ends up in the oceans and um, other environmental areas where it can affect animals and ecosystems and things like that. We should be protecting the earth that we live on. Um, it's obviously not going to be a nice place to live for anybody, including ourselves and the animals. It all gets covered in trash and even, um, like, you always see those pictures of the fish in the ocean that have their heads stuck in plastic containers and stuff like that, so it's not good for anybody. Some students may not know how or what to recycle. There are many regulations to certain items, such as glass bottles need to be cleaned and have all labels removed or removing paper clips, rubber bands, and other accessories from paper. Even though IEP provides the ability to recycle, most students don't. They should publicize where and how to recycle. I don't think students on campus recycle that much because it's not their top priority right now. I don't think students recycle on campus because if you look around in the Oak Grove, there's not a lot of recycling bins out here. There's just trash cans. And I feel like that's where people throw out most of their trash but they do offer them inside buildings. But again, I don't know if students actually throw them in there. Many students may not know in what ways IEP offers in terms of recycling. 51% of waste in residence halls could have been recycled according to IEP's recycling facility. Yes, I think they do already in a way that they have recycling containers in the different um, eating facilities and buildings. But I mean, I guess a little more um, promotion around campus couldn't hurt. Uh, yes, I think that IEP should promote recycling um, just to be an environmentally friendly um, place for students to go. It's I know as me as a student who like tries to recycle, it is difficult to recycle on campus. Um, I find it challenging, and so if they promoted it and made it more accessible, then more people would do it more naturally. IEP clearly has five recyclable water bottle stations. One is located right here in the HSS building. The other four are located in Folgers, Sutton, Robertshaw, and Pierce. This is a good way to cut back on everyday trash. Other ways that cut back on trash is to recycle paper, plastic, and cardboard. You can find these bins in your academic halls. I use a Brita filter to stop wa the waste of plastic bottles, and it saves money and the environment. Uh, I use Tupperware whenever I, I pack lunches sometimes. I live at home, so my parents, we separate our newspapers from our pots and pans and the plastic bottles. Um, I try to bring reusable containers wherever I go, um, and so I don't use extra plastic when I can, and so I just provide my own items whenever I go out somewhere instead of using um, plastic or containers like that whenever I go out to eat or whenever I get a drink at a restaurant or something like that. Waste has a huge negative impact on the environment. With the help of Darcy, Katie, Cody, Rachel, and yours, we can help reduce the effects. This is Adam Dwork reporting for IUP TV News. Karamo Brown from the hit Netflix show, Queer Eye, will stop at IUP. This visit is a part of his successful string of college appearances. Tickets for Karamo Brown are available. This event will be held in the Fisher Auditorium. IUP and the Indiana community will welcome hundreds of families for the 2019 Family Weekend Celebration on September 20th and 21st. Each colleges will hold events that appeal to all ages and at the same time provide information for families. Registration is free through IUP website and it includes a parking pass for the weekend. That's all the news we have for today. Thank you for watching IUP TV News. We'll see you next week.